we're going to be talking about reducing decommissioning modeling time using one of the new features that we've introduced into SACS pre-seed. We're going to talk a little bit about decommissioning what it is uh, for a few moments. So decommissioning is the process by which an offshore platform is returned to its pre-lease condition. Uh, and that typically involves plugging wells, severing well casings, removing uh, production and pipeline risers, and uh, where we're concerned in mostly is removing the structure from its foundation. Uh, and according to the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, uh, we uh, are typically required to remove uh, or decommission the structure within one year of the lease termination. Um, so we're talking about decommissioning now because a lot of structures were built during the 1970s that are reaching the end of their life cycle. Um, well, in fact, most of those were only designed for maybe 25 or 30 years and have had life extensions. Um, and as far as regions go, the North Sea, Gulf of Mexico, Southeast Asia, Latin America, West Africa, and the Arabian Gulf are all expected to see um, many decommissioning projects coming up within the, the next few years. So on as far as SACS is concerned, we are trying to incorporate new features to help facilitate these projects to make them easier and, and faster for you. When we talk about removing the structure from the uh, seabed, uh, usually with a jacket, we are launching the jacket structure because uh, you don't have a lift vessel that can lift that structure. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't unlaunch a jacket uh, since uh, they are uh, too large to lift and you can't float them back out onto the barge or anything like that. So uh, usually you're required to cut the structure into smaller pieces so that the lift vessel can pick them up and transport them. Uh, and it's up to the structural engineer typically to determine where to cut the structure based upon uh, reducing the number of cuts, uh, getting the total weight of the structure, uh, considering uh, uh, the transportation and the lift capacities, and also trying to optimize the lift points. So in SACS 11.0, we introduced the initial iteration of the decommissioning tool. Uh, and it was somewhat limited in its capacity. The, the main limitation was that uh, you were uh, only allowed to cut in one plane. But with the release of 11.2 and beyond, we've added some new features, um, notably the visualization improvements of the cutting volume. Uh, we now allow you to cut in uh, multiple planes or just cut a volume uh, a cube. And then we can also now save that cut view as a separate model. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about each one of those features in depth in the, in the coming slides. <clears throat> so with the visualization options, uh, you might have seen earlier that we had just a red a wireframe box, but there's a number of visualization options that uh, you can select from where we just show the faces, uh, change the color of the visualization uh, and the transparency, as well as maybe adding some additional uh, lines for the cutting planes to make it a little bit clearer what's going on. Uh, and that's all available within the de decommissioning tool. One of the main features is the ability to automatically sum the loads within the cut volume. So when you are looking at cutting the structure, you want to make sure that your lift vessel is able to pick up that piece. So you might have, say, 1,000 kip maximum capacity for your lift vessel. 
and then you can modify this this volume to optimize the cutting planes. You see right here we're automatically summing the loads for D100 and we have a uh, total sum of forces of about 895 kips. So we can keep that in mind as we are cutting that volume. We might want to increase that or reduce that based upon our limitations. You can also see that we're automatically summing uh, or calculating the center of forces of this structure. So it's or this cutting volume, I should say. It's not a separate structure yet. But this is also something we might want to be keeping in mind as we think about our lift points and other information like that. Now, I did want to mention that uh, the decommissioning tool is limited to basic load cases because it is reading the model information. And uh, especially uh, load cases like C-state load cases. So if you're utilizing the C-state automatic uh, dead load generation, or if you're doing uh, what most engineers do where we create load combinations of say your dead load plus your non-structural dead load plus equipment and any other kind of uh, load cases that you might have, say piping, um, then those are all separate and you can't really sum on a combination of those uh, with a model file. So what you can do is you can run a C state analysis. Uh, it's under the loading type and subtype Met Ocean Loading in parentheses C state. And when you run that C state analysis to do your load combination, you can select the combined load cases as basic. I've showed the uh, load uh, option LD opt line for the C state input file and also the equivalent option in the C-State Load Options dialog and precede. So if you select that and run your C-State uh, analysis, you'll generate a C OCI file, which is simply the model file with all of your load combinations that you've selected, uh, calculated as a basic load condition with distributed member and joint loads. And that can then be used for your load summation uh, in your in your cutting plane uh, or cutting volume calculations. Talk a bit about the cutting plane options. So cuts can be made in um, in each plane. As you can see here, we have uh, cut X, Y, or Z. These are limited to or orthogonal uh, planes that align with your global coordinate system, um, and or you can cut all to cut a volume. Uh, and when you do this cut option, you will generate a new view with the selected volume, or um, in the case of the plane, it's going to be everything on one side of that cutting plane. When you do cut, there's a few things that happen. Uh, the first thing is that we'll generate a set of joints for any member that uh, crosses the cutting plane. So for instance, you can see these legs and braces here that were passing through the cutting plane. We, we divide the member, we insert a joint at the cutting plane, and then for segmented members, we will create a new group to define the member that goes from the cutting plane to the connecting joint. So if you recall with segmented members, usually you'll have a can at the A side of the member and a can at the B side of the member. And if you split one of those members or divide them, typically, then you'll have the A and B cans in that segmented portion of the member. Uh, when you create a new group, then you can only use the B can in this instance uh, to, to, to define that element. So you shouldn't see any kind of issues with s cutting those elements. Uh, the same goes for distributed loads. Uh, you may have noticed before, sometimes if you're cutting members, you'll get errors with, you know, the, the load is going off of the member because you've, you've uh, split it into two pieces. Uh, 
Uh, and so we handle all the uh, cutting of distributed loads and everything like that. Okay, so once we create this view, uh, you should see that we have the view and the active structure. So this is not yet a separate model. We just have a view which contains all of the elements in this volume. Uh, and then, you know, of course, we've modified the model with uh, the joints in the new segments. So what we need to do then is go to the views uh, property box, which is under home views, and then when you look at the view in the property uh, box in the left hand side of the precede, you can right click the view to bring up a context menu and then select save view as a model uh, in the context menu there. So what this does is it'll prompt you for a input file uh, name and you can save this separate view as a separate input file. Uh, you can, uh, you will retain the original input file uh, and have this new uh, model file. And this new model file can be used for any kind of analysis that you might need. Probably going to be lifting and transportation, uh, but you know you may have a few other analyses that you might need to do. And uh, that's it. You can also save those views. On um, in this example, I've created a folder cuts which is uh, then has all of the volumes that I cut. I cut this sample to model into three separate volumes, uh, all to approximately be between 500 and 1,000 kips as a kind of an example. And uh, each one of those volumes I then saved as a separate model file. And those can then be used for transportation analysis and lifting analysis. And um, that's essentially the feature. There's there's uh, not really much else besides that, um, but that's kind of the basics. So with that, I'm going to open the uh, open the floor for questions. Uh, I get one question here. It says, can you cut plates? Uh, no, not right now. That's not one uh, of the elements that we support cutting. Um, we usually don't need to cut plates because uh, often we are, we don't want to, I'll put it this way, we don't want to cut plates usually because uh, we want, are usually wanting to do the minimum amount of cuts possible. So usually you're going to limit it to cutting at the legs or you know a few braces here and there, but usually you're going to want to avoid cutting plates. So if you do that, uh, if you do cut a plate, you'll need to mo manually modify the plates uh, as you uh, after you do the cut views. Okay, we've got another question. Let's see, can I undo a cut? Yes, you can. So after you create, actually, I can go back to the slide. So when I click the button cut, either cut X, Y, Z, or cut all, and I create the view, these joints and segments and everything that's been added in, if I hit Control Z or if I hit undo in precede, then I will revert all of those changes that are made. So you'll go back to the original model. Uh, and it's worth noting that you are modifying your original model. So you may want to create a copy of your original in, input file uh, just as kind of a working file when you're doing these modifications so that you'll have the original without the additional joints. Um, so, uh, so another user asks, uh, can we use this for anything else? Uh, and, and that's a great question. Uh, the, of course, you could cut any model uh, into a view. Uh, now, it will add those joints in there. So if you're wanting just to generate a view, uh, you can also do that manually using the traditional selection tools. Uh, 
but once you do that, once you create views, you do have the option with any of your views to save that as a model file. So uh, yes, you could you could use this for say doing your in-place model, and then if you want to do your you know, pre-service analyses, you could generate those uh, pre-service models using the original input file and using the view export. Um, we have another user asked, do you have a step-by-step -step tutorial file for the example you demonstrated? Um, not yet. <laughs> so I am planning on doing a decommissioning uh, special interest group presentation uh, probably next month. I Let's see. Oh, I have another another question here from a user is what happens when I cut at a location with joints? Uh, and actually, this will happen often when you do, uh, say, the top volume that I show here, but also the middle segment is going to share the same cut plane with this top view. And so if there are already existing joints at those locations, nothing happens as far as the cut is concerned. You know, all we're doing here is introducing joints uh, for members that already are, that don't have a joint there. So if there's an existing joint, it will just create the view at that uh, Z location. And so you won't have to do anything there. Let's see. Oh, a user asks, can you select joints to populate the min, max, X, Y, Z like view volumes? Um, and I don't believe that's possible. I think that you are limited to the uh, to the just entering it in. We have a slider that you can use, and you can also type in the value. But that is a good point that maybe we would want to uh, support uh, selecting the joint location to to populate that value as well. Oh, and I didn't I didn't mention it before, but we also have on the uh, dialog a step value. Let me go back to the slides. So you see right here we have a step value and this simply controls the uh, steps for the slider. So when you move the slider it'll in this instance it'll increment by one foot but if you change that to five it'll increment by five feet so you can kind of control it that way as well. Um, but that, that is a good suggestion to select the joint uh, to populate the, the elevation. 